So the passage is about prayer. And prayer is just a fancy word for talking to God. Just talking to God. There's nothing particularly religious about it. You don't have to use any kind of special language. I, I don't know where that comes from, but it doesn't come from the Bible. Uh, they talk to God the way they talk to everyone else in the Bible. So religion got a hold of it, and we start going thee and thou and thither and whither and hither and thither and, and of thee in the clouds beseech thee of thy bounty and all that stuff. I never, you know, as a kid, it's so confusing. We used, to, we used to pray, bless us, O Lord, for these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. And I didn't know what the word bounty mean. But I did go, my dad took me to see a mutiny on the bounty. <laughs> so I thought the bounty was a ship. So God has a ship up there. He's going to bless us out of this ship or something. I don't know. I was a confused little kid. Uh, mixed up little theologian. Uh, some people think you have to use a special religious posture or a special religious voice. Oh, God. <laughs> we beseech thee to die. Or you got to close your eyes. Or you got to, you know, the, 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 here's the thing. I mean, if that works for you, fine. I'm not going to go after that. But when you have a special posture, special language, special voice, special anything, it takes it out of the realm of the ordinary. And so it feels unreal. And the whole job of the kingdom is to make our relationship with God our ordinary, to, to intersperse it with everything else we do. And so I encourage people to talk to God the way you talk to your best friend. Uh, use your ordinary language. And, and whatever helps you do that, do that. But, but it, it, it's, it should be the ordinary of the kingdom person to just be talking to Abba Father. When Jesus calls God Abba, it's a word for daddy. It's intimacy. Dad, here's my concern. And, 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 and there, there's no special posture. If, it, if you like to kneel, that's fine. If you lay prostrate, that's fine. If you like to walk when you pray, whatever, whatever enhances your dialogue. The important thing is that the dialogue is your normal. And, and we don't like bracket out a sacred space over here that's apart from our normal. We want to make our normal sacred. And so to make it part of your ordinary dialogue throughout the day, just talking to Abba Father. You don't even have to vo vo vocalize it because God knows your thoughts. Though I find that vocalizing it helps make it real because I don't normally communicate just by thinking it. <laughs> Can you read my mind? No, I, you, you vocalize it. And so it helps, for me, it helps make it concrete and real when I vocalize it. Though there are occasions where vocalizing it may be inappropriate. If you're sitting at a baseball game all of a sudden, you start praying or, you know, you don't want to draw attention to yourself that way. Um, but on the whole, I, 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 I tend to vocalize it because it just makes it more real. And there's a lot of different kinds of talking to God. Sometimes it's just adoration and praise and thanksgiving. Sometimes it's more of a dialogue. And we need that. We talk to God and he talks back. Learn how to listen to God. Learn how to discern his voice. And then there's a kind of prayer that's called intercessory prayer. And here is where you, you uh, are talking to God about a situation that needs changing. You're asking God to intervene, to release kingdom power, to change the situation. You're interceding on behalf of another. And that's the kind of prayer that Paul's talking about here, and that's the kind of prayer I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about throughout this message. So Paul says, devote yourself to prayer. It takes an act of discipline to carve out the space that you need to talk to God. Devote yourself to prayer. And then he says, pray for us. Pray that the door will be open to the spreading of the gospel. So apparently, people's prayer influences the degree to which doors are open to spread the gospel. And then Paul says, pray that I'll be able to speak the mystery of Christ clearly. So apparently, the ability of a preacher to make a point depends somewhat on who's praying for them. So if my sermons suck, it's your fault. <laughs> I'm just saying. 